Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can track schedules in Excel. So suppose you've got employee start and end times, how we can map that out in Excel to see where we've got heavy staffing amounts and where you know there might be staff shortages and gaps. So I'm going to create a simple template and show you how we can set that up. So I'm going to start with setting a start time of let's say 8 o'clock, the idea being that we can modify this if we need to, and an interval, I, I want to say, I want to track 30 minute blocks of time. I'm going to highlight these in yellow to specify that these are inputs. And next, I'm going to set up my, my data section for the employee start and end times. So I'm going to have the employee here, start time, and the end time. So let's say employee A, they start at 9 o'clock in the morning, and let's say they go until 10 o'clock in the morning. Obviously a very short shift, but for the purpose of this example, I just want to show those different blocks of time. For employee B, let's say they went from 9.30 a.m. until 11 a.m. Employee C, we've got from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Now the one thing to remember when you're entering time and you're using uh, um, a.m. p.m., you want to put a space after your time time, just a single space, and then put the AM or PM indicator. Because if you don't have that space, Excel's not going to read your data properly. It might interpret that as text, and it's not going to not, not going to calculate properly. So let's add a few more employees. Employee D from, let's say, 1 p.m. until 3 p.m. And let's say employee E, we've got starting from 2 p.m. until 5.30 p.m. So we've got our shifts set up. Next, what I'm going to do is going across, let's set up those, those intervals, those blocks of time. So I'm going to start at 8 o'clock, and I'm going to jump by 30 minutes at a time. I'm going to freeze, freeze that value for my interval, because I always want to jump by 30 minutes, and copy that all the way across. Now, the one thing here that you'll notice, is obviously we don't need these, these cells to be this large. To save space, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these cells, right click format and under the alignment section I'm going to set the orientation to 90 degrees so it's going vertical and now I can select these columns and shrink them down so I can do the same thing I can copy this all the way down so I get more values here and let's do the same thing and shrink these down so I got it all the way going to um, 630. Now, if you have, obviously you're using AM, PM, not a 24 hour clock, what you can do is adjust these, adjust these values. So I'm going to right click, format cells, and under the number tab, go to the custom. So we've got hours and minutes. I'm going to put a space for AM or PM. And so now we've got our, our time in the AM or PM format. So we've got it set up. Now the key thing is to set this up to determine, okay, which blocks of time is this employee occupying based on their schedule? So to correctly set this up, we need to use an if statement. And within that if statement, we need multiple criteria. So I'm going to use the and function for that. So I'm going to look at this first value, this first block of time, and say, okay, if this is greater than or equal to this employee's start time, and this value is less than their end time, those are my criteria. So if that's met, I'm going to set it to a value of 1. Otherwise, set it to 0. See, it's not true. And before copying this over, I'm going to freeze some of these cells. So the, the values in row 4, I need the 4 frozen because I don't want that row to move. And I want the columns B and C frozen so that those columns don't move as well. So now I can copy this across. And so I can see if they work from 9 till 10, the 9 o'clock time slot is occupied and the 9.30 time slot is occupied. Since they didn't work at 10 a.m., they, they finished their shift at 10 a.m., that they were not occupying that time slot. So that's working properly. And now I can copy this down to the other employees. Now, obviously, visually, this is not really helpful. There's a bunch of zeros and ones. This is not, not ideal. So what I'm going to do is use conditional formatting to help me here. So I'm going to create a new rule and use a formula to determine which cells to format. 
So when you, you select conditional formatting, you want to pay attention to that fir first cell in your range that you're selected. So I'm going to say equals E6, and I'm not freezing this, is equal to 1. I'm not freezing this because I wanted to apply to, to every one of these cells. I don't want anything to be frozen here. And if it's met, I want the format to be green. So I'm going to use, use a green highlighting. And let's also use a dark green border to help it stand out a little bit more. And let's also make the font color green as well because I don't want that font showing up. I don't want that one to be visible. Now I'm going to hit OK. And you can see now we've got our blocks of time filled in. Now, one thing obviously is these zeros are a bit of an eyesore as well. So we can get rid of those as well. An easy way to do that is just change the font to white. Because we've set the conditional formatting so it gets rid of the values that are true, then we just need to set the default so that the values that aren't true, that are zeros, they are set to a white font. So now let's look at what, what our workload looks like in terms of staffing levels. So what I'm going to do is, since we've got a, a bunch of zeros and ones filled in here, even though they're not visible, I'm going to use the sum function to sum those values up. So let's say I'm going to go all the way down to, to row 15 here. Even though I don't have data in there, let's put that in there right now. So we can see that in some, in some places we've got twos, in a lot of places we've got ones, and some we've got zeros. So again, we can use conditional formatting to help us here. So I'm going to go to conditional formatting, create a new create a new rule and I'm going to use the default option here the format all cells based on their values and I'm going to use a three color scale so I've got for the lowest value right now I've got red yellow and green but I want to flip these flip these values around so I want it to to be green when I've got my lowest my midpoint yellow at my highest when let's say there might be, be overstaffing levels I'll put that at red so I'm gonna hit okay and so we've got those values filled in again we've got the numbers visible so let's modify this on a right click format cells and an easy way to get rid of the values is just to put three semicolons and that gets rid of the formatting so now we can see based on based on our schedule where we've got a lot of staffing which is red and where we don't have a law in this case is green. So obviously you can modify these colors based on um, however you prefer, but that's how we can create that formatting. I'm gonna remove the grid lines from here just to make it a bit easier to, to focus on, on the schedule here. So now let's, let's say we, we adjust this and let's say everybody had a start time of 9 a.m. 9 a.m. And let's copy that. So you can see now our conditional formatting has highlighted that okay, the the, the most overstaffed levels are at the beginning where we've got we we see the, this dark red, and then it starts to ease off and eventually go green. And here we don't have have any. So by doing it this way, we can adjust our our schedules or, or visualize it to see okay, this is where we don't have any people. So for example, we have a gap at eight o'clock to eight thirty. So maybe we decide okay, this person. Let's have them start at eight o'clock. So we get rid of that gap. Maybe have another person start at eight o'clock. We can do that to adjust it. So now we get rid of that green formatting. And maybe this person, you know, they work until 6.30 p.m. to make sure that we've got some coverage all the way through, or actually till seven o'clock, let's say, just to make sure we've got that last half the hour filled in. And so we've got that. So even though these are green, those are our lightest, lightest loads but we don't have any, any gaps. So you could create additional conditional formatting rules if you wanted to to highlight those areas where there are, are gaps based on those coding, but using that graded scale, it's a lot easier to see where, there, where there's a lot and where there's not as, not as many. So you can adjust those to um, put even more variations in terms of colors there. And so now because we, we've set our formulas all the way down to row row 19 here we can add more employees if we wanted to employee f and let's say they start from 12 p.m until 7 p.m you can see excel's automatically detecting that that additional row that we've added and it's updated our our schedule so it's an easy way to to manage manage the time 
and visually see what our scheduling or, or staffing workloads look like. So the key to making this work, quick recap here, is we want to set up our rules. We want to set up our formula to make sure that this block of time falls within this range. So we're considering the start time, that it's, that it's at least greater than or equal to the start time, and it's less than the, the end time. And if it is, we return a value of one, otherwise zero. And then we apply conditional formatting to all the values that are one. And then anything that's, that's a zero is by default set to a white formatting. So by doing it this way, we can create a, a visual representation of our staffing levels and our, our schedules and workloads. So that's right for this video. If you did like it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.